our journey begins to the short man and Alabama will put it in play around the 30 yard line so a young man who grew up in Los Angeles a fifth grade moved to Texas played high school at a high school powerhouse South Lake Texas about 26 miles northwest of downtown Dallas is 10 miles from DFW played in front of huge crowds and that's one of the finest high school stadiums you'll ever see and so here he comes with his family friends from Southern California very much in attendance and all of his buddies from the Dallas Cowboys organization where his father works in marketing one of the vice presidents the Heisman Trophy winner right alongside him now Sergio Kendall he's the target they have to always account for number two when you come to the line of scrimmage Ingram stoned and now our starting lineup for Alabama presented by Taco Bell this offensive line folks they have not been called for holding in the last 34 quarters 34 unbelievable for an offensive line the skill guys we've seen Ingram Julio Jones you'll meet him Marquise Mays can get deep and peak is a dandy tight end out of Florida transferred from Georgia Tech movement false start first mistake of the game and Carpenter Five yard penalty. second down friend big thing to remember in this big a game so much emotion out on this football field for these players dealing with this for the first time in their careers they played in some big games but nothing compares to what they're going through emotionally on both sides of the football right now McElroy back to pass for the first time shakes off now he's sacked on the 20 yard line by Lamar Houston who is the key to that Texas defensive front his 19th tackle for a loss this year Herbie well, he's very disruptive he has tremendous quickness one of the things that he has to be able to do in this football game is come clear and be able to get back into the face not only of McElroy and passing downs but also get into the face of Mark Ingram he is the key up front a lot of talk about Sergio Kendall but it's the senior Houston making a big play early for the horns eight yard loss and it is third and 23 an uncomfortable spot for the Alabama offense Kendall was coming they drop it in underneath and complete so the strategy of taking the ball after winning the coin toss backfires on coach Saban this Texas defense has been hearing the, for the last 32 days that they're not physical enough to match up with the SEC. Here's Jockey Brown and Julio Jones here early saying, let's do this. It's going to be a long game. P.J. Fitzgerald, a four-year starter back to punt, and here is Jordan Shipley. He and Arenas are going to have one of the great duels returning punts here tonight if they get a chance. A pass, a fake. Intercepted. Gideon pulls it down as Nick Saban goes way against his coaching philosophy and comes up with a Belichick move on the first drive of the game. Go figure. Two, two big surprises by Nick Saban. First taking the football and then deep in his own territory early in this game. Taking a chance trying to get it to Drake or Patrick the true freshman. And how about Blake Gideon showing the discipline getting back recognizing the football and being able to see Texas great field position. They're across the 40 yard line. Three. Ship with his catch a game. Now you can expect Texas, Herbie, you and I have talked yeah. about this. They're going to come a little up-tempo against this defense to try and keep Saban from over-substituting. That, and they want to be the aggressor. Quick snap, quick throw, and they put it in Williams' hands. So first, 
It was Shipley, then Malkin Williams as he completes his first two balls, and he suddenly got him in third and short. They, they want to get Colt McCoy in this offense in rhythm, and they want to try to challenge Alabama with the tempo. Texas feels that Alabama's had over a month to prepare for this up-tempo offense, but a scout team running it compared to Colt McCoy running it are two different things. There is Houston, the big defensive tackle. He is directly in front of Cody Johnson. He's the short yardage expert for the Horns. Cody muscles, battles, gets it at the end. It'll be a first down for the Horns. Remember, this Texas offensive line has been hearing since the Nebraska game that they're the weak link, that they're lucky to be here despite their performance in the game against Oklahoma, Nebraska. They want to come out early in this game and establish a mentality that they're not going to back away from Nick Saban's SEC defense. And in a third and short early in this game, they didn't get big yards, but they were able to create a little bit of pride within themselves by picking up that first down. Here is Newton trying to get the edge. Shakes a tackler. Comes down the far sideline for another first down. Nate Newton's little boy Trey. That's a 16-yard run. Brett, poor angle here by the safety, Justin Woodall. And I really think he underestimated the quickness and speed of Trey Newton on that play. Now the option look, and Colt McCoy bangs into an offensive lineman who was being pushed back by Dederick. Brandon Dederick was in there, and so too was Darius. Number 57, Darius, big time defensive player for the Tide. Big there hit. he is. Yeah, big hit, Marcel Darius, in this football game against this kind of offense. Marcel Darius is the best Alabama defensive lineman as Colt far as hurt. creating pressure. Colt is hurt. That means the untested freshman, that's Garrett Gilbert. He's right out of Austin. McCoy's on the sideline being tended to. They'll use a timeout to give him a little bit more time. They will come back and take a look at exactly what happened here. Didn't look all that serious, but we'll see. Looks of concern on that Texas sideline. Colt McCoy suffered a shoulder injury on that hit, and it means that the freshman Garrett Gilbert, son of Gale, who played eight seasons in the National Football League. He's out of Austin. He has a great upside, but he's very inexperienced. And they bring around the end around for a first and goal at the one yard line. That was Monroe, DJ Monroe, who was reinstated. And a great block here by Kyle Hicks, sealing the corner and allowing Monroe to get there with all of his speed to the edge. Now quickly right straight ahead there's a penalty flag hang on thrown from the side it is a touchdown if it stands by each team on the play. They have an illegal formation on the offense, five men in the backfield. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 25 in the defense. That would be penalized half the distance to the goal line, first down. That is Rolando McLean, the leader of the defense, as the training staff for the Longhorns continues to work on Colt McCoy on the sideline. You know, Gilbert comes into this game a highly decorated recruit. Very fortunate to be able to pick up the big play with Monroe to get him down inside the one-yard line. But Gilbert at 6'4", 207 pounds, has been mainly in on mop-up duties. Only has 26 attempts on the year. Johnson comes back in. Houston and Cobb. Here comes the short yardage expert, and he... Battles his way to the one-yard line against that Bama D. Remember this Alabama defense 
number one in the country as far as red zone defense, only allowing .65% of the time their opponents come down in this area. Orlando McClain needs to keep his cool. You mentioned it. He is the leader without question of this Alabama defense. Second and goal, and Texas comes back up in that power formation. Johnson battling for the end zone, and Bama won't give it to him. This is why they're number one in the country. They attack you. McLean goes over the top, but you can see Lorenzo Washington, the first one there, the big defensive end to get in there to make the play. And six or seven Prince, Crimson jerseys helping out. And Mount Cody right there in the middle. Yep. You can't move him out of the way or when you're trying to get into the end zone. So here we go again. There's big number 62, 360. We're going to throw with Gilbert, and he'll throw it away. Fourth and goal, and now what does Mac Brown do? Field goal unit trots out onto the field. The starting quarterback's been knocked out of the game. Saban congratulating the defense for the goal line stand. And maybe taking McCoy back to that locker room for further treatment. So here is Hunter Lawrence, who was the hero of the Big 12 championship. Jordan Shipley is the holder. An 18-yard field goal puts Texas ahead after the turnover as McCoy will walk back to the locker room. Now take a look at the hit. You'll see Darius come in right there on the right shoulder of high, and that appears to be where Colt suffered the injury. New field. Sod was brought in from Palm Springs. Field was scraped right after the Rose Bowl victory by Ohio State over Oregon. And a brand new playing surface down here for Texas and Alabama. Tucker. Another short kickoff, keeping it away from the deep men. That's a live ball. Texas goes for it. They may have it. That's live. It is Longhorn football. Another Alabama mistake. Brett, that's a lot of confusion here. And actually, Julio Jones, of course, should come up and make the catch. But I think he was expecting the up back to come back and make the catch himself because Julio Jones had so far to come to be able to make that catch. Texas, another opportunity deep in Alabama territory. Garrett Gilbert, if you just joined us, has replaced the injured Colt McCoy, who appeared to suffer some sort of shoulder injury. We'll get a report a little bit later. He's gone to the locker room. Trey Newton, and now they start to pound a little bit. Uh, it, it, this is this is significant. We didn't have a whole lot of time to talk about it. You go from the all-time career leader in wins with Colt McCoy to a young man that really hasn't taken any meaningful snaps until he's come into this football game right now. You lose the speed, and you lose the experience with Gilbert. So they come with Trey Newton. And Newton is stopped at about the 25-yard line by McLean. Make no mistake about it now. This young man can throw the football, and they have confidence with his ability to throw, but it'll be a little bit more of a conservative approach by Greg Davis as a play caller for Texas. Buckner flexes off the line, and three wide for Gilbert. Now they empty the backfield. They're going to put it on third and five. They're going to let Gilbert throw it. It is dropped. Pass is dropped by Dan Buckner. And these, these, the Texas wide receivers as a group need to understand that with Colt McCoy out, if Gilbert Brown gets it close to you, or if Gary Gilbert gets it close to you, you have to be able to catch the football and help him out. But I like how they moved him away from the pressure, got him outside of the pocket there on their real first big third down here with the young man in. There's Hunter Lawrence. Remember now, 
Shipley's the holder. They have faked a couple. This is a 42-yarder. Hit a 46-yarder against Nebraska to win it. Now the 42-yarder. And Texas builds a six-point advantage following two Crimson Tide mistakes. And if Mac doesn't get Colt McCoy back, they're going to kick it short again. Keep it away from Renus. And the up back. And they will have it at the 40-yard line. But we take, take one more look at Darius coming in from behind here on Colt McCoy. And this is 300 pounds coming downhill in a hurry. And, and when he came in, I think McCoy thought initially he was going to be okay. And then, of course, he had to take himself out of the football game. And at this point, it's a wait-and-see approach for the Texas medical staff to see what the x-rays show. Now, back to Alabama. That interception following the fake punt. That ended this string of 309 snaps without a turnover. And then they turn it over a second time with the kickoff team. So it is first down and 10. That won't show as a turnover. But in effect, it was a mental mistake. McElroy can't find a receiver, and he's sacked again. Acho, Sam Acho, there are two, and this is number 81. Outstanding coverage here by the Texas defensive backs. Watch everybody who's manned up. Even you can see when you go to a nickel package, you have to have the ability to be able to stay with the receivers. And Aaron Williams, one of the top defensive backs in the Big 12, is right there with Marquise Mays. And much like we saw with Colt McCoy against Nebraska, Greg McElroy had nowhere to go with the football. He just had to eat it. running Ingram first down Bama and let's take a look at this a big run by eight by Mark Ingram you can see this from the direct TV all the ultimate picture can he gets to the corner is able to pick up some good blocks in up front there Colin Peaks able to help out Julio Jones it's the first time Ingram has been out in the open space being able to accelerate into that Texas defense Trent Richardson comes into the game, the freshman, but they split him out wide to the right. They spread the field here after the 18-yard Ingram run. McElroy in trouble and sacked again. The offensive line, which had been so good for Alabama against Florida, is having a nightmare here in the early going. That's the third sack of the night. This well, one by Keenan Robinson. Will Muschamp's going to bring pressure, but then he's going to show a different look. They're just trying to create some confusion. It's a great job with the zone pressure, a look they've not shown a lot of this year. And on the left side, Carpenter didn't have a chance. He, I think he assumed that Lamar Houston was coming. He dropped back, and they came with Kendall off the edge. Fire from the quarterback. Wildcat formation. Richardson goes back into that spot that Ingram has run the Wildcat from. He'll fake it, keep it behind the left side. Battles out close to the 40 yard line. Now, this Texas defense. Let's take a look as it is presented by Taco Bell. Herbie's been talking about these fellas. Lamar Houston's off to a big start. Sergio Kendall moves all around. They're the linebackers. Keenan Robinson got free. And of course, in that secondary and on the kicking team, Blake Gideon with the interception on the fake punt. Earl Thomas is an All America. Here's third down. Let's see if Texas brings pressure with another crazy look, or if this time they decide to only rush with four and play zone. Up Church is a terrific receiver. Stays in the block. Now he slides out. McElroy can't get him in time. And Alabama is forced to punt. Sam Acho. Well, we can talk all we want about the offensive line, but this is good time for Greg McElroy on third down. They rush four. They end up dropping some people into coverage, but the Alabama wide receivers right now are losing the battle. Curtis Brown, number three at the top against Julio Jones, matched up in man coverage. He had it in there, but by the time he looked, he was actually starting to bail out of the pocket. Shipley goes back deep. I remember Fitzgerald threw the interception. Not faking this time. Booms it high toward the end zone, and it'll go in. 
It'll be Longhorn football coming out on the 20 yard line. And in case you just joined us, the headline is this Colt McCoy has been knocked out of the game. Freshman Garrett Gilbert is now the Horns quarterback. They lead it by six. Welcome back to Pasadena and the BCS National Championship game. Texas quarterback Colt McCoy is still back in the locker room area right now. He is being x-rayed. One of the Texas trainers just came out and told me that they are x-raying his right shoulder. Again, he is still back in the x-ray room and the status about whether or not he will return to this game is uncertain. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Lisa. So here's Garrett Gilbert with Trey Newton getting nowhere on the first down run against that Alabama front of uh, now now you're going to find out what Garrett Gilbert in this offense is made out of and this is why it's so important as a backup quarterback to be ready the offense will maintain the same approach with a hurry up but the plays will be more conservative and Newton is thrown for a loss by Eric Anders that with that tackle Anders has now had 13 and a half tackles for a loss this season for the tie. And when I say conservative, I mean more predictable. This is when Kirby Smart and Nick Saban realize that they've got to do a good job of coming after Gilbert and the running game and the short passes. Make it Gilbert go downfield to have any chance of executing. Sometimes a punt can be a good play. The Horns with their freshman looking at third and 13. Sets a screen and read perfectly by McLean. One of the most instinctive linebackers in the country, and Newton didn't have a chance. Uh, the, the natural call with a young quarterback is a screen or a draw on third and long. Rolando McLean sees it the entire way. He actually gets out there before Newton is even able to clear the lineman to turn his head back to catch it. Newton never had a chance. It's because McLean read that like a book. Mac Brown telling us that if Justin Tucker gives Arenas a chance, he's made a mistake. Let's see what Tucker does. He's backed up in the shadow of his own goal line. What they're going to see all night long. Mac saying we're going to punt it out of bounds time after time. Well, something different. The Pro Bowl is coming to Miami, and it'll be broadcast by ESPN. McDonald's presents the 2010 Pro Bowl, and that's the week before the Super Bowl. That'll be some South Beach down there, January 31st. And we've got some alums from these two great programs who are going to be playing in that Pro Bowl. You can see three from Texas and two from Alabama. These Alabama wide receivers have to do a much better job of getting off of press coverage and working hard at the line of scrimmage to get open downfield to help McElroy out. Now they go to the pistol formation where the quarterback is not lined up as far for the center as he does in the shotgun. A very familiar formation when you study Bama and they come with Ingram. He crosses midfield and then is pushed back. They're attacking behind the left side of that line, Herbie, running against the right side of Will Muschamp's defense. We should point out Will Muschamp right there. He learned much of the defenses he calls from Nick Saban. He was an assistant with him at LSU when they won a championship. He went with Coach Saban down to Miami during that brief time that Saban was the coach of the Dolphins. Now he is the coach in waiting for the Texas Longhorns. Second down and two for Bama. Power run got the first down first man can't bring him down yards after contact continue to add up for the Heisman Trophy winner. Well the big question coming into this game was how would the number one ranked rushing defense in Texas stack up physically to Mark Ingram in this Alabama attack and up to this point they've done pretty well. But right now Ingram may be getting into a little bit of a rhythm and the offensive line opening up some seams. Texas doing a pretty good job of getting upfield to try to slow down Mark Ingram. If you can make him bounce it to the outside, it really takes away his strength. Upchurch checks in. Good pass defender, good receiver, and he'll take it right there on the Wildcat and take off again before he is smacked at the 35-yard line by Muckleroy, the middle linebacker. 
You know, they have run this since you and I called their first game against Virginia Tech, whether it's Ingram or Upchurch. And Upchurch, when he steps into this game, has pretty good acceleration himself. When he came off of the fake to Julio Jones, he started to run downhill in a hurry. And when Alabama's picking up chunks of five yards on first and ten, that's Alabama's game. Richards is the running back as McElroy returns and is under center. I should say, let me check that, of course, McElroy. Backs up, fires to the far side. Julio Jones has a penalty flag also. Julio out of bounds as he crosses the 15-yard line, and there is a penalty flag. Aaron Williams is in coverage there. Holding. Number three, defense. This penalty is declined. Result of the play is a first down. It was Curtis Brown in the corner, and that's a 23-yard gain, Harvey. And it's the first time that Julio Jones has been able to turn a defensive back completely around, and then he's just set, set up and found a nice opening in the secondary. But that was, again, man-to-man -man coverage by Texas, and this time give Julio Jones credit for beating his man. Ingram back in. Gets the carry, crosses the 10, powers ahead for another first down. It'll be a first and goal. Well, this is the kind of game that Mark Ingram loves. Look at his vision. Look how he's looking upfield and reading the blocks on the linebackers. Roderick McElroy, the middle linebacker from Texas, has to do a better job of stepping up and filling the gap. That time, he sat back, tried to read it, and he didn't have anywhere to go. And next thing you know, Mark Ingram went right by him. That is the end of the first quarter. And when we come back, Alabama. So the Crimson Tide threatening here with a second and one. They can actually pick up a first down without scoring a touchdown. And there's Mount Cody, the lead blocker for Mr. Ingram, who has 44 yards already. Now looking over the top for the first down. It'll be first and goal for the Tide. Anytime the big fella comes in, you're on the defensive side, you better be ready for a big body. <laughs> it reminds me so much of William Perry. Oh, yeah. The refrigerator for the Chicago oh, Bears. Every God. time I see him come out onto the field. There is Shonda Ingram, and that is Mark's mom. Many of you have read the story of his father, Mark Sr. He's in prison, convicted on bank fraud and money laundering charges. They stay very, very close. There's a tremendous Heisman Trophy ceremony. Mark was very emotional. Talked about his father as he dashes into the touchdown and gets one for dad. Sophomore from Flint, Michigan, and I'm going to tell you an interesting story about Shonda. Nick Saban was an assistant coach at Michigan State at the time, and the, uh, the head coach said, Nick, keep an eye on Mark Ingram Sr. I want to see that he goes to class. We've got to keep this rascal eligible. He's a key to our team. Well, Nick didn't know what to do, so he went to his girlfriend, who was then uh, not married to Mark, Shonda, and between the two of them, they kept an eye on Mark Sr., and then when young Ingram graduated from high school in Flint, Michigan, and it was time to go to college, Shonda remembered Coach Saban, and that's why the young man has traveled down from Michigan to Alabama, and the Crimson Tide faithful are so happy he made that trip south. Two carloads of fans drive down from Flint, Michigan, Herbie, to every Alabama game. Haven't missed one. And here he is, get the Heisman. You were there that yeah, night. Yeah, I was. It was very, very special to see. Uh, he wins the trophy. And there's Colt McCoy right there for his first guy to congratulate him. And got pretty emotional up there. And I really thought it was one of the better speeches. He gathered himself for a 19-year-old to win the first Heisman trophy for that great institution to be able to gather himself, step back away from the mic. I, I thought he was a real class act in the way he handled himself and represented his school, himself, and his family. Only a sophomore. He'll be back 
And SEC defenses are not happy about that. 47 yards tonight, rushing, and one touchdown, and the first man just can't bring him down. So Bama leads for the first time tonight. Kickoff fielded by Goodwin. Track speed, looks for a seam. And he'll be down on the 25-yard line. Greg, big, I, I, it was a great touchdown by Ingram. Let's watch the block up front by big Mount Cody. Texas was so scared on the previous play. They just said, if 62's coming through with 350 pounds, I think I'll just step out of the way this time. I, you know, everybody loves a big man. I mean, Les Bingaman was probably the, uh, the first big one that I can remember with the Detroit Lions and nose guard in the National Football League and back in the day. And here we got Mount Cody. Now first down and 10 for Gilbert and the Horns. Here's Newton into the middle and stoned. Josh Chapman and Darius. Marcel Darius is a fine football player, number 57. One of the better defensive linemen in the SEC. And, and right away, we're starting to see in the last two or three series with Colt McCoy out, the inexperience of Gilbert. You're seeing a much more conservative approach, and Alabama is attacking this Texas offense. They'll run the toss play. There's a penalty flag thrown by the umpire at the offensive line on this play. And uh, this is a Big East officiating crew. McDade's our referee. Personal foul. Chop block. Number 52 offense. Now exactly this is the goal line. You know, they had two chop blocks called against them in the Nebraska game. And Mac Brown thought they were both bad calls. And now here's the first one here tonight against... Charlie Tanner take a look. Well, I think this is a good call oh, to, the, to the right there once you're engaged with an offensive lineman another offensive lineman cannot submarine a defensive lineman. So the one thing that Texas can't afford to do with a young quarterback in is self destruct deep in your own territory and now face a second and 23 and eventually a third and long because Alabama knows what's coming. The screens, the draws, very predictable here. Again, with a play calling with a young guy. Greg Davis upstairs trying to keep it simplified. And end the round now. They put it in the hands of the former quarterback, John Childs, who now is a wideout. So, so Greg is still trying to dial up some high percentage plays. As you remember, he threw that screen pass that McLean ate up. And at some point, you're going to have to go downfield. Yeah, and I think on early downs, you're better off taking that chance. Greg Davis up there with the glasses. It's almost like Greg Davis has one arm tied behind his back right now trying to call the plays with a young quarterback. Third down and 15. Hit on a release. It's ruled incomplete. And that was Courtney Upshaw. And one thing about this Bama defense, they are so deep. Uh, and they give you so many different looks. The one thing that they have is speed and execution. And this time he goes right around Kyle Hicks, the junior, and is able to get in there and put the pressure on Garrett Gilbert. The game is moving very fast for Garrett Gilbert, like any other freshman quarterback, when he goes out there against this Bama defense in this big a game. Arenas standing back on the 40. And Tucker. And Arenas is going to get a shot, and he's hit right away at the 43-yard line. Terrific coverage, but it didn't get out of bounds. Brent, I think Eric Gilbert may have taken a shot there on that third down. He may be injured as well. That will be the second quarterback knocked out. So Colt McCoy does not look happy as he leaves the x-ray room and goes back toward the Longhorn locker room underneath and now with young Gilbert shaken up you know Vince Young is Kirk Herbstreit said during that commercial he left with a year of eligibility <laughs> <laughs> get him out there now McElroy on a play action to Richardson and Richardson breaks a tackle and battles for a first down so on their first series after the interception Darius from behind suffered a right shoulder injury. Now 
hit by Courtney Upshaw and Gilbert is receiving attention over on the sideline but he appears to be okay. He is up conferring with Greg Davis and the assistants up on top. Bama leads Texas by a point seven six. Trent Richardson the freshman from Pensacola Florida and dropping back was Preston Dial make sure he was all set. Here's Richardson. Let's go down below now to Tom Rinaldi. Tom. Well, Brent Gilbert took a pop on that right shoulder, according to trainers. He was just put through some range of motion exercises. He's worked it out and ready to head in for the next series. Brent. All right, thank you, Tom. Brent, I don't know if you're noticing this, but since the injury to Colt McCoy, I think it's affected not only Gilbert in the offense, but also the defense. They've, they've lost a little bit of their stinger, their confidence. They seem to be playing a little bit cautious right now. And meanwhile, Alabama's playing with a great deal of confidence and very aggressively now on both sides. Roy Upchurch checks in as the running back as they continue to alternate backs. Play action, McElroy. Looking to go deep and can't get it off. Sacked at the 45 by Sergio Kendall. That is the fourth sack by Texas of McElroy here tonight. And Sergio Kendall just kind of sitting on Colin Peake, waiting for the play. And then once he realizes that McElroy again doesn't have anybody to throw the football to downfield, he's waiting and waiting for Hanks or somebody to break free. That's when Kendall decided to turn it loose and come up with a big play. Need your leaders to step up when the game's on a line like this, early like this, because of the injuries, and that time Kendall did. Alabama in an uncomfortable third down. Up church, barges across midfield. And now they will leave it up to P.J. Fitzgerald to drop a punt inside the 20-yard line if he can. A four-year starter out of Coral Springs, Florida. And that is Brad McCoy, Colt's father, heading inside the Texas Longhorn locker room to see his son. Jordan Shipley. He'll signal for the fair catch right near the 15-yard line. A one point national championship game, second quarter, Pasadena. ESPN's coverage of the City BCS National Championship game on ABC. Brought to you by City. Proud to present college football's biggest game. The all new Accord Cross Tour from Honda. Versatility modernized. Allstate. Proud sponsors of college football. Are you in good hands? And Miller Lite. Triple hops brewed for that great Pilsner taste. Taste greatness. With Kirk Herb Street, I'm Brett Musburger. We welcome you back on a beautiful night, one of the few parts of the country which is enjoying good weather over the last few days. And there you see that the defense get ready. They have dominated this Longhorn offense. Young Gilbert up to the line, Herbie. Brent, I think he's got to take some chances downfield. He does just that, incomplete. Tried to get it to Shipley, threw down the middle. He's been in this in this uh, game for three series, and he's not been able to produce a first down since he's been in. The game has really shrunk. Right now, Alabama feels like they're defending uh, this young quarterback from about five yards in in with a, most of it being running plays. That's why I think Greg Davis said, hey, guys, we've got to take a chance and be willing to try to get the ball thrown downfield. Arena shows blitz. He's coming. And Gilbert is tackled at the 15-yard line. Javier Arenas coming off the corner, number 28. And this is exactly what they're going to do with a young quarterback and an offensive line and coming off of a game where they gave up nine sacks to Nebraska. They're a big gun shot. All you have to have there is you got to be able to change the offensive line's protection to the right. The tight end that time needed to be able to pick up that blitz, Greg Smith. But without Colt McCoy in there to direct the traffic up front, there's an Achilles heel now up front. And Cody was stoned in the middle. Deflected, incomplete. And 
and the horns are forced to punt again. And Nick Saban is very content with playing field position right now with this Texas offense. He's incredibly confident along with Kirby Smart because they know that this offense is limited. They've got great field position. It's a matter of time if the game continues like this until they can capitalize and come up with some points. Another great play by McLean. What a fabulous linebacker. The Butkus Award winner. Certain first round draft choice coming up. Now they put Julio Jones back with Arenas to try and spread the field against the strategy, the rugby punting effort of Tucker to go out of bounds. And here's Arenas from the 44 yard line. Shakes a tackle. Looking for the NCAA record. Thrown down at the 49 yard line. That was Sam Acho making the stop. You're watching the City BCS National Championship on ABC. Well, here's our view from our Direct TV Ultimate Picture Cam on this beautiful night here in Pasadena, California. Two unbeaten. Alabama, number one. Texas, number two. Bama leads it by a point, and Texas had lost its star quarterback, Colt McCoy, to a shoulder injury. Now, there's the pistol, and that's Richardson, the freshman right behind McElroy. Richardson to the left side, and he is brought down. McElroy, number 38, senior. Really nice job there by McElroy. He is so important to the Longhorns' effort to slow down not only Richardson, but obviously Mark Ingram. And it's all about seeing it, trusting it, and then attacking downhill. Coaches say that his greatest strength with the experience are his instincts. And you can see it right there. And off Richardson bolts up the middle for the end zone. This could be a touchdown. Put it on the board for Bama. A 49 yard burst by the talented freshman from Pensacola. Tiffin, whose daddy was a legend down Bama Way. Dan Tiffin, who can forget that 52 yarder against Auburn. Lee tacks on. Another extra point. He's got just as much speed, maybe even a little bit more than the Heisman winner Ingram. 7 minutes and 59 seconds left. The two youngsters who Rushed for touchdown. Heisman Trophy winner and his young buddy Richardson. Ian Ingram have led the way. 92 rush yards for Alabama in this game. Now the short kickoff from Bama. Get it to the 40-yard line. Brett, one of the one of the risks you take with movement with this defensive line is opening up creases. Watch the block by the left guard here, Mike Johnson. James Carpenter, 77, comes off of his block and picks up Keenan Robinson. And with a poor angle by Blake Gideon, there's nobody left right there. So even when Ingram steps down, the true freshman Trent Richardson has been doing it all year for the Crimson Tide. Fozzie Whitaker has checked in. Sprinting around end is Monroe to the outside. Monroe across the 35 yard line. And that's the second time tonight that they have brought DJ Monroe off the edge, this time for 28 yards. And watch Fozzie Whitaker lead the way, Brent 28 with a great block right there. Just enough of catching Mark Barron to be able to spring him loose. And when Monroe turns it on, it's tough to catch him. This could be a spark for the Horns here who need something to happen. And they run with Whitaker. So Fozzie Whitaker handling the ball for the first time. Keep in mind that this young man, number 28, can also throw an option pass. And now they put Gilbert up under center. 
They fake. Going to go toward the end zone. Incomplete. Malcolm Williams, the intended target, and off the play action, they had him. Great sequence of plays here by Texas. They had Alabama on their heels. They had the opportunity. The ball is thrown where it needs to be. It would have been a tough catch, but Malcolm Williams at 6'3 has to go up there and help the true freshman out and make the catch. Greg Davis thought he had it. Trey Newton comes in from the Longhorn sideline. He's the running back on third and five. Gilbert under pressure and intercepted. Picked off by Arenas. Arenas kills the drive with the Alabama interception. Once you throw into the middle of this Alabama defense on third down, they got away with a hold, Daryl McClain. You know that you're taking a major risk. Arenas, one of the better cover men in college football, is there perfectly. And actually, I think Jackson may have had a chance there, too. So with a young quarterback, you've got to get him out on the edge and away from the middle of that defense. Gilbert has no chance against Saban's defense. No. no. You're absolutely right. Yeah. When you're a young guy, just get him on the edge, make it simple reads. He can't be reading the middle of this Alabama defense, especially on third down. Ingram back in. The hand coming left side. Look at the power that he demonstrates. You have to be so impressed as you watch Mark Ingram how infrequently the first tackler can bring him down, Herbie. I mean, if you make contact on him and forget about it. Yeah, you better get low and you better wrap up. But I, I, for you and I to see here and call Alabama's last game, going back to early September when they played Virginia Tech, the big question was McElroy and the left side of the offensive line with James Carpenter coming in, replacing the Outland winner, Andre Smith, Mike Johnson, the glue in the center, Blahos. What a great season, and that was a great play there by the left side. Ingram again. Nine more yards. Take a look at yards after contact by number 22. It's unbelievable. He came into the night with over 1,000 yards, as you talked about, Brent. And there's just on one play, two different times, Texas defenders are trying to use just arm tackles. Here's Muckleroy, one of the more physical tacklers on this defense, and he runs right through him and Earl Thomas. And if Julio Jones' left leg didn't get there, then Ingram goes into the end zone. <laughs> Second down and one. It comes again behind the left side. Breaks another tackle and makes his way to the 45. And this is a will-breaking drive. One of several that Bama's had this year. Will Muschamp's going to have to make some adjustments. Right now, Alabama is getting to the edge, and it's rather easy for them. You're seeing the big left tackle, 77. Carpenter seal it. And Julio Jones, who's lined up into the boundary, one of the more physical blockers in the SEC for a big wide receiver. He's taking his man out. There's nobody left on the edge. Trent Richardson's back on the field. An abundance of riches for Jim McElwain, who is upstairs calling the Bama plays. Here's Richardson again. And he too breaks a tackle and makes it to the 40 yard line. So McElwain, who had his Bama offense under the gun against Auburn, and he dialed up a sensational drive, and he's calling the plays now for the Crimson Tide here tonight. Well, we're beginning to get our answer about Texas being the number one ranked rushing defense in college football. A lot of people felt, is that because of a result of playing in a Big 12 where it's more finesse and a little bit more of a spread? Or is that a result of him actually being physical and being dominant early? We're saying it's favoring Alabama. Second down and five. McElroy going to go deep down that far sideline. Double coverage out of bounds. Gideon had come over the top to help Williams against Mays that time. So Mark Ruiz Mays, the intended target. Well, the Texas defense is holding up very well on the perimeter in pass coverage. I mean, Aaron Williams is doing a good job. Curtis Brown, Shockey Brown, Gideon, Earl Thomas. They're making it McElroy, but where they've got to get better is as a group gang tackling and becoming more physical against this running game. On third down, 
the Texas defense has stopped Ballard. They're 0 for 3, and here they are again now. This a little more manageable number. Need only five. The handoff to Richardson. He did not get it. Terrific play by Earl Thomas. The sophomore from Orange, Texas, and one of the real good ones. Great job of filling the hole here. You see him at the top coming downhill in a hurry. And what helped him that time is Aaron Williams, the corner, that time was able to contain the back and force him to cut back underneath. And there's Earl Thomas waiting for him to uh, come up with a big stop. So Fitzgerald out to punt. And Shipley standing about the 10-yard line. Bluffs the fair catch, but Bama's going to cover it inside the five. Tough spot for Garrett Gilbert. And we want to remind you that on ABC next Thursday, two of television's biggest shows reunite and the sparks will fly. An all new Gray's Anatomy, and then private practice crossover event next Thursday starting at 9, 8 Central on ABC. 3.50 to go here in the first half. A major headline is that quarterback Colt McCoy was knocked out, injured shoulder, first series of the game, has not come back. They're still evaluating. His father's inside the locker room. Now, Garrett Gilbert, the freshman, backed up against his own end zone, keeps it and sneaks out to the four. We go down below to Lisa Salters. Well, Brent, Colt McCoy will not be back for the rest of this half. We're being told by the training staff that they're going to reevaluate him more at halftime. Right now, he's back there getting treatment, and they're continuing to examine him. Guys? 3.29 left in the half. Second down and eight. Long handoff Newton behind the left side. And now uh, Herbie, the uh, the horns will be in third down. Yeah, and it, and it goes back to the to the game plan of Nick Saban. If he's not going to be able to score, very content with moving this young quarterback inside his 10-yard line. Because of the play calling, Nick is very confident with what is coming after him. It's very conservative. They know they have to. Texas has to be very, very sensitive and careful not to turn the football over deep inside their own territory. 14-6 is one thing. 21-6 is something else entirely. Third down and six. They put Gilbert back in the gun. Pump fake. Got a wide open receiver incomplete. He had Shipley. Alabama does not think that Texas is willing to throw it downfield, and that's why they have to be willing to take some chances. You have to applaud the effort there. He missed it. They weren't able to execute, but look at Shipley. That's your man, one-on-one. -on -one. Throw it to the outside, and you've got about a 35-yard gain. Great double move that Shipley put on the corner coming out of there. Johnson was the corner for Bama, and now Tucker's back in the end zone. There's 2.30. There's time now here for Alabama. Jones and Arenas are going to have good field position. On the fly from Arenas, McElroy and the Tide will start from the 29-yard line, 220 left here in the first half. It's exactly what Alabama wants to see. It's a matter of time. You keep pushing the quarterback back. You get good returns with Arenas. You keep pushing Texas back further and further and further. Now Alabama has to capitalize on this opportunity with such great field position. Ingram will be the running back. Hanks, Mays, and Jones are the wideouts. Peaks your tight end. Here's Ingram. And again, attacking the left side and breaking that first tackle. Well, a reminder that you can own a piece of history by downloading the full-length BCF's National Championship game on iTunes. So go to iTunes.com slash ESPN. iTunes.com slash ESPN. Click on the BCS logo, and you can download it. 
Second down and four here, Herbie. Mark Ingram continues to work the outside of the Texas defense, and once in a while they go back in and get the matchup they want with the blocking angle back to the middle of the defense. Ingram cuts back. Battles for the first down. There's another example of this play being designed to get to the outside and watch how quickly Mark Ingram at 215 pounds can stop on a dime and cut back. That's what makes him so effective in this offense. What the offensive line wants to do is push you to the sideline. And to do that, you need a back with vision to find the crease and get upfield. First and ten. Stretches. Battles for a couple of yards. Does it remind you at all of Emmett Smith? I, I know a lot of people have said that. I mean, there, there are a lot of similarities. He doesn't have blazing speed, but he has enough speed to be able to be dangerous when he gets into the open field, and his balance is... And that's the one thing that, yeah. that you would wonder about, because nobody, no running back ever had better balance than Emmett Smith when you uh, think of him. And, of course, Jerry Jones and the front office have come up here tonight to watch this game, and you would think that they are all Texas Longhorn fans, but it is because of young McElroy. Yeah. His daddy yeah. works in the front office for the Cowboys, and uh, Jerry Jones said, listen, I love everything about Texas, but McElroy is family. Uh, he is family, and, and right now he's on top of things. This is a drive that, that is very, very important for both teams. The way the game has gone, Texas had some breaks. They were able to come up with six points. Obviously, the injury to Colt McCoy. Bama's come on strong with 14 unanswered. Now it comes down to Alabama trying to execute in the red zone. Kind of a problem spot for them this year. And Texas has to hold them to a field goal attempt to feel that they can still come back in the second half and win this. Trent Richardson back in as the Bama running back. A little bit of a draw play, and Muckleroy jumps in from that linebacking spot and makes the stop. Here's another difference in the game with Cole McCoy out. With a, you know, you get a minute 15, you make the tackle on third down. If you have confidence in your defense that they can come up with a stop, you're going to call a timeout right now for Texas because you want to give Cole McCoy time to throw. Right now, they're just trying to limp into the locker room, and they're not worried about getting the ball back and scoring. Third and seven. Bootleg. McElroy. He can run. Slide dives a little bit short. It is short of the first down, and now it is Saban who will have a decision to make. The Texas defense had to make a decision. They had two defenders out there, a little bit of confusion, and then finally Keenan Robinson, the linebacker, comes back just in time to keep McElroy short of that first down marker. They waste some precious seconds and finally call a timeout. I'm very surprised that Saban didn't immediately call the timeout and decide to go for the first down with Ingram a power back or let the clock run down and then kick the field goal. You got a 14 6 here with 33 seconds, but clearly they had not decided on that sideline what they wanted to do. Yeah, I don't think they were sure. And if anything, it makes you think maybe that there's a better chance that they're going to go for the field goal here. And he's just letting some time run. And if you are Texas against this field goal, you're thinking, watch out the fake. You're behind 14 6. You got 33 seconds you're looking at. They can get the first down and get that clock stop. Here is Lee Tiffin. 82 career field goals. Now the punter, PJ Fitzgerald, he's already thrown one pass tonight as a punter. This is a 26 yard field goal. Saban says we'll take the points. Can't argue with that. 17 to 6, 23 on the board here in the first half. Well, a reminder now that you can log on to all of those special sites Boston, Dallas, Los Angeles, Chicago, ESPNLosAngeles.com. You got the latest in Kobe Bryant and what's going on with the Los Angeles. Lakers and uh, here tonight of course tomorrow down in Dallas everybody will be dialing in to see what's going on as we look at this beautiful scene and uh, Herbie it is 10 o'clock uh, back in the east and for some of those people who have arrived home especially out here in the Pacific just a short time ago major headline is that Colt McCoy 
was knocked out of this game on the first drive. Texas kicks a couple of field goals, but Bama has 17 unanswered. Yeah, and, and right now Texas is, is obviously on his slide at 17 to 6, giving 17 straight points up. It's going to be interesting. Mac Brown gets in there at halftime to talk with Greg Davis, his offensive coordinator. First and foremost, what's the status? Do I have my quarterback back, or am I going to have to continue to play with a true freshman? Tough deal. They're going to have to take some chances if they want to come back and have a chance of winning this game in the second half, throwing the football downfield and believe in a young man. Tiffin with the ball on the tee. From the five-yard line, here comes Goodwin to the 27 yard line so this was the first series after the Bama turnover and McCoy is hit Darius injured shoulder he has gone out a couple of things to keep in mind this young man has an NFL future his father has gone inside the locker room I'm sure that he is talking with the medical people they'll do what is best for Colt McCoy in this situation now, young Garrett Gilbert, who is the future quarterback for the Longhorns and who has struggled here, brings him out. There is Trey Newton on the first down handoff. Strong run for nine yards. And Texas looks like they're going to call a timeout there on the sideline. Interesting. You, know, you, you think they're, they're going to try to run the football and, and maybe just be content just to try to get out of here without turning the ball over potentially again to this Alabama defense. But they run the football, pick up nine yards, and now maybe with such a great kicker in Hunter Lawrence, maybe they're thinking, you know, let's take a shot downfield and see if we can come up with a, a catch and pass interference and maybe be get, maybe get into uh, field goal range. When you think about the Texas receivers, both Williams and Buckner had shots here in the first half that they probably should have held on to. Yeah. One of which by Williams would have been a touchdown. Would have been a huge, play. It would have been a huge play. And somebody within the offense, a leader, a Jordan Shipley, somebody needs to talk about helping this quarterback out in the second half if he's going to be out there and giving him confidence that they believe in him. Here's Gilbert, that inside shuttle pass. And, incomplete. Uh, incomplete, or is it a fumble? Picked up by Darius. Darius in the air. Darius going for the end zone. That could be a touchdown. If he's got it in the air, that's an interception and a touchdown. That was a shuttle pass, remember? And the way they're celebrating, you think in all the world that Marcel Darius, who knocked Colt McCoy out of the game, now the officials are going to huddle. Obviously, instant replay. We'll take a look at the replays upstairs and make sure. But if he caught it in the air without a hitting the ground, interception, touchdown, yeah. Alabama. His only play is an interception and a touchdown. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 57 on the scoring team. The 15-yard penalty will be enforced with the kickoff. Well, that, that play happened so fast. The shovel pass. I really thought that with the juggling that the ball may have hit the ground, but it, it did not. And that's exactly what Texas did not want to do. You they wanted to get to the halftime, 17-6. to six. They're the ones who called the timeout. Tiffin on the field. A buzz in the crowd. The dagger may have come out early. Tiffin tacks on another... And even the play call with a shovel pass, you're going to think that the worst case, Monroe's going to drop it, and it's incomplete. The ball is bouncing all around right there. I thought it may have hit the ground, but I, no chance. He is all over that, and, and big number 57 tonight, Darius, has been a big factor. He's the young man who knocked Colt McCoy out. He's had a lot of opportunities to get pressure on Gilbert, and this time very alert. Keep in mind, he's 300 pounds. What an athlete exactly what Nick Saban needed that's that's what he's been waiting for an opportunity to get the, turn, the freshman to turn the football over and he finally got it 24-6 Marcel Darius out of Huffman Alabama just a sophomore just a baby Trying to pick up his spirits over there on the 
on the Texas sideline trying to get him to hang in. No one knows for sure whether or not Colt McCoy will be able to come back in the second half. We'll have to wait and see. X-ray of that injured shoulder father in the locker room. On the ground. Running the clock out. Coming to the end of the first half. Alabama takes charge after the Colt McCoy injury. The Heisman Trophy winner with 90 yards, and let's go down to Lisa. Thanks, Brent. Mac, why take that chance with your backup quarterback at the end of the half with that shovel pass? Well, the chance is about as safe as you've got, Lisa. It's an underneath shovel pass. It's like a draw. If it's not open, you throw it in the ground. We were trying to get past the 50 so we could take a deep shot. What's your training staff, tell, training staff telling you about the status of Colt McCoy? It's just a shoulder and they're reevaluating. We got a plan on playing without him. We got to do a better job than we're doing. We gave up the big run. Uh, we gave up the useless one there at the end, and Alabama's playing hard. So we got to regroup and do a better job second half. All right. Thank you very thank much, you. Mac. Now let's send it over to Tom Rinaldi. Tom? Thanks very much. It's a great ending to the half, Nick. But with Colt McCoy being knocked out, how did that affect your defense strategy, in particular their ability to be aggressive? Well, you know, we had a different plan completely, but they would be a lot better team because he's a great player. So it's unfortunate for them, and uh, we haven't stopped to run as well as we need on some of those speed sweeps and so forth, so we're going to have to make some adjustments to that. I'm sure they're going to open it up more, and we're going to have to play for 60 minutes in a game. Thanks very much, Nick. Right. Appreciate it. Brent? All right, Tom and Lisa, thank you. And a reminder now to stay tuned for the halftime show from the City BCS National Championship. Colt McCoy knocked out. And we'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Well, now the entire team knows, and they can group around Gilbert. There's no doubt McCoy will not be back for the second half. So you play on. Fielded back at the nine yard line by Goodwin. And Goodwin is cut off. Got over to the 25 yard line. And he is one of those game breaking speedsters who, if they can find the right play for Goodwin, they can help themselves a lot. I think it's important for you and I and everybody watching to cut this kid some slack. He is a true freshman. He's very limited on how much experience he has. He's being asked to do next to the impossible and coming into a national championship. No matter how much talent he has, the game is moving fast for this young man. Let's watch to see how Greg Davis makes adjustments to help him here in the second half. He's got good genes. Daddy played eight years in the NFL. Here comes Newton on first down. Nine yards on that first down run. And you and I were talking towards the end of the first half. It's important for the leadership, the seniors that are around him, Ulatowski, Charlie Tanner, Chris Hall. These are all offensive linemen. You've got a, a great receiver in Jordan Chipley who's been around. These guys have to talk to him and let him feel that they believe he can lead them back in this game. Here's Newton again and hit by McLean. McLean is so savvy. One of the most intelligent linebackers in the country this year. He spends hour after hour watching tape of opponents. Watch him here. I'm so glad you used the word intelligent because he's he's really an extension of Nick Saban and Kirby Smart. He's like having a defensive coordinator out there as a three-year starter, 6'4", 258 pounds, moving around out there and making plays like he's about 220. Going to be a Sunday dandy, number 25. Third down and two and young Gilbert back with his first pass of this half and fires it for a first down and that's the Shipley. Great. So there is a first down pass and that'll pick up the young man's confidence. And there, there's a great call. They're going to go with a hurry up here. This is usually where they might try to take a shot downfield here. Garrett Gilbert young man from Austin has a tremendous upside incomplete and he was under enormous pressure that time Irving. The great thing that I've seen here early in this second half is I didn't like to see a young quarterback back there waiting and waiting and trying to read the middle of the Alabama defense. There's too much activity going on there for a young quarterback to try to decipher who's coming and who's going. Quick reads, get the ball out of his hands fast, and occasionally take a shot to the outside in one-on-one -on -one coverage. Second down and 10. Fires and 
Williams goes down for it, and that's a completion. And wave it off. I thought for a moment, but there is a penalty flag. And this could be a. Looks like Mitt Williams might come up with that, but the ball obviously hits the, the surface. And here's Kareem Jackson again. Pretty good coverage from the big sophomore wide receiver. So it looks like Chris Hall with a leg whip here. And that's why they're marching it off against Mac Brown's Longhorns. And, and Mac Brown just can't afford to see that Chris Hall steps out of the game here. Have to keep a close eye on him. Now you're dealing with a backup center and a backup quarterback. Keep an eye on a center quarterback exchange, whether it's under center or in the shotgun. But Mac Brown can, and his offense cannot afford to have to execute second and 25. Second down and 25. Snow replaced him. He snaps it. And incomplete. Kirkendall, number 11 underneath. And uh, Brent, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, when you wait for plays to develop, imagine here comes the center. Welcome to the game. Welcome to the Alabama defense. He's trying to figure out who he needs to pick up. And when you're sitting in that pocket, the game is moving so fast, he's just trying not to make a mistake instead of getting back there, making a quick read, and getting the ball out. Third and 25. The flare on the outside to Goodwin with that speed. Picked up a first down. So there is the young speedster from Garland, Texas. Marquise Goodwin for 37 yards. And every time Marquise Goodwin gets his hands on the football, you know that this is a possibility. Everybody in the stadium knew that a tunnel screen was coming on third and long, but they're able to hit it. Coming right back up. Great block, Herbie, by Williams that time, too. First down and 10. Newton trips. It'll be second down. They give up a good yard on this play. You can see Newton kind of looking up at the quarterback, Gilbert. And that's just a little thing there where you've got a backup quarterback. He's a little bit, maybe a little bit in front of where Colt McCoy might be. The rhythm of the handoff there, a little bit out of sync. And Gilbert ends up knocking down Trey Newton on that first down play. Second and 12. And that was a false start. Illegal motion on the horns. False start. Number 74 offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. Yulatovsky, fine left tackle. The rhythm of the game changes completely. Different cadence, yep. different centers. I mean, the whole thing starts to back up on you. You and I love Orlando McClain. How about him? He, he, he is in total command. Nick Saban and Kirby Smart are yelling to him from the sideline, and within a second, he can make the adjustment to get the defense ready to go. Pump fake. Far side, incomplete. Took a shot downfield at Goodwin. There is Kirby Smart, the defensive coordinator, and he is going to be in the next few days interviewing the head coaching job at Texas Tech. Now, the Texas Tech president is here tonight watching this game. He happens to be an Alabama graduate. So Kirby Smart moves into the discussion as to who will be the next head coach over in Lubbock. Third down and 17. Alabama will bring pressure here with an empty backfield. Deflected incomplete. And that was Mark Barron, one of the fine safeties on this great defensive unit. Brent, I'm sorry. Anytime there's an empty backfield and you have four, third down and long, you bring one more than the offensive line can handle. And obviously, the quarterback has to get rid of the football quickly. And that time, Bama, great call there that time by Kirby Smart. So uh, security will be called to uh, remove an idiot. And then we will continue here in a Rose Bowl. 24-6 and uh, so discouraging, Herbie, for the, for the Longhorns to, to lose Colt McCoy in the fashion they did right after 
I mean, they had a turnover oh, yeah. on the yeah. fake punt. They had were going great, in. Great opportunity. Had all the momentum in the world they could ever hope for. The other thing that happens here is now to start the second half, they pick up a few uh, first downs, looking like they might have a chance to get some points, get themselves to believe. And then the Alabama defense put the, puts the clamps down. And Texas assisted there with some costly mental errors and mistakes as well. So this is Gold who has come on to punt this time for Texas. Into the end zone. It'll come out. Out of the 20-yard line. The tide rolling. They lead it 24-6 here in the third. ESPN's coverage of the City BCS National Championship game on ABC. Brought to you by City. Proud to present college football's biggest game. Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. Nissan Maxima. Proud partner of the Heisman Trophy. And G2. Half the calories. All the G. Well, Kirk, uh, we were in commercial yet. Such a divide. Colt McCoy there on the sideline. Uh, trying to urge his team on and talking to the young quarterback before he came yeah, out. Yeah, he, he was urging everybody on, and he really was trying to encourage Gilbert to try to give him some confidence. Some of the things we had talked about earlier. On first down, Gilbert. Brought down by Anders. what you're talking about here in the, during the TV timeout right in the middle of the offense saying hey, let's go right now guys let's go these guys got to they, they need a reason to believe that they can get back and be competitive picked up five on that run and now off the read option throws Williams puts it down incomplete line judge ruled it incomplete second time that Malcolm Williams has had the football in his hands only to not come up with a catch Renus appeared to be just a little shaken up there, didn't he? Yes. Looks like he's going to try to get through it. Coaches say pound for pound, the strongest player on this Alabama defense. Well, that almost looked like a fumble, didn't it? Third down and five. Fires right over the middle. Shepley for the first down to midfield. There he's in rhythm. There he gets back, and he makes a throw, and of course, he gets a little bit of a rub there to open it up for Shipley underneath against man-to-man, -man. but that time, Gilbert got back, took one hit, and got rid of the football. That's what he's got to do. There's that speed run again and going nowhere. D.J. Monroe is hit by Lorenzo Washington. Lorenzo Washington said, guys, eventually that's going to catch up to you. You can see from the direct TV ultimate picture cam, he just went right by the offensive line. Kyle Hicks, the right tackle, never had a chance because of the slant, the move to the inside by Lorenzo Washington, the senior. Yeah, Kyle Hicks couldn't deal with him on that play. And it is second down and 15. Bama shows blitz. Middle fires incomplete. And Shipley coming across. That is exactly the matchup that Texas would want. Having Jordan Shipley throw the have a chance in one-on-one -on -one coverage with Justin Woodall. That's a mismatch. He's open. It's not like Shipley to join in on the party and drop the football. Reamer may have got a finger on that ball. Seemed to change motion, and the linebacker was jumping at it. Third down and 15. Far side going deep, overthrows his target. It was Childs. That's John Childs. John Childs, who moved over from quarterback to receiver, kind of gives up on the route at the top. It doesn't really look like he believes he's going to get a chance to get the football. He has got to get downfield at the very least, take Woodall with him, and then maybe that'll open up and open up something towards the middle of the field. Not a great effort that time by Childs. Here comes one of the great punt returns. Obviously, Javier feels 
well enough to attempt to return this uh, punt and again goal back out to punt. Javier Fair catches it at the 18 yard line. So the Texas D holding him in here in the second half. Now we'll see what can happen. We welcome you back to the City BCS National Championship game. Beautiful night in Southern California. Sell out crowd here. The Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Alabama looking for its first national championship since 1992 under Gene Stallings. They lead it here. Ingram. So we talk about young McElroy and uh, let's go back and review his history a little bit. Born right here in Los Angeles. Became a huge Los Angeles Dodger fan. Then he moved to South Lake Texas about the fifth grade. He was a reserve quarterback behind Chase Daniel at Carroll High School. And then as a senior, lo and behold, they went unbeaten. He committed to Texas Tech, then made a visit to Alabama, fell in love with the school. His father's hero, of course, was Joe Namath. And the announced the quarterback did that he'll come back and play his senior season. And got a little stoppage in play. There may be a cramp suffered by the Heisman Trophy winner. Ingram is, is up, coming off toward the sideline. He's played brilliantly here tonight. Rushed for 92 yards and a touchdown. And Greg Sr., like I said, was an offensive guard over at Hawaii. Now for the last four years, he worked in the Dallas Cowboys front office. But Joe Namath was his hero, and the son wears number 12 in honor of the Alabama legend who's out there. So many great players played for the Bear. Coming up now with Richardson. Fine tackle by Sergio Kendall. Another one of those fellows you're going to be seeing on Sunday. Number two, big timer. Now the game is dictating the play calling by Jim McElwain. He's kind of pulled it in a little bit since the, the Alabama team's been able to dominate on the other side of the football. But McElroy not asked to do a lot tonight. Three of five for 39 yards. They've been winning this game with defense. And it's, again, he's managing the game and just trying to avoid a mistake to get Texas back in this football game. The Colt McCoy injury turned everybody's game plan completely around. Third down and 12. Inside handoff and ridden down is the young running back hit by big Lamar Houston. You know, I, I think you got to understand what Alabama's doing. They're working a little bit of clock. They're being conservative. They're being smart. They don't want to give Texas an easy turnover. But look, Lamar Houston almost ripped that football out. This will be a great look at it. He gets in there so quickly, and he's able to get a hand on the football. Look how close that ball came to coming out. I think he actually may have kept it against the thigh pad that time of Ingram. Here's Fitzgerald back to Shipley again to fair catch at the 46-yard line. So, freshman Garrett Gilbert will bring the horns out, working with a short field, and see if he can put some points on that scoreboard. Uh -huh. Our view from the DirecTV Ultimate Picture Cam here tonight on this lovely Southern California evening. The tide has been rolling ever since they trailed it by six points. And what is so very hard for Greg Davis right now with this offense, Herbie, is the fact that they never did establish a big-time running game this year. And now when you've got a freshman quarterback and you have to run, dial up the same plays, it makes it even doubly difficult. They'll try to run again and nothing doing as we go down below for more on Colt. Here's Lisa. Well, Brent, I just uh, spoke to Colt's father, Brad McCoy, who is now back up in the stands, and he obviously very concerned about his son. He said it doesn't appear that the shoulder injury is too serious. He said that the x-rays were negative, so that right now it appears to be a sprain, but they won't be able to confirm that until he's evaluated further. What Mr. McCoy told me is that Colt actually had been really begging the coaches and the trainers to let him go back into the game. He said he just wanted to give it a shot, 
to give his team everything that he had, but ultimately everyone around McCoy, Mac Brown, the team doctor, his father, they all decided that it wasn't worth taking the risk that he needs to be concerned and take care of his NFL future. Guys. All right, thank you very much, Lisa. And uh, on that play, Eric Anders, the defender for Alabama, had it read perfectly, and Newton couldn't hang on to the little swing. And so Texas now facing a third and ten. Gilbert has had four passes dropped here tonight, so certainly his receivers have not helped him a lick. Gilbert incomplete Williams the intended target he was well bracketed on the sideline yeah. Brent that's what I was going to mention one of the things when you face a Nick Saban defense is he's going to double a couple of you couple of your wide receivers especially on third down situations it's up to a quarterback that's experienced like Colt McCoy to find the single matchup and win that battle here with this young quarterback he had probably made up his mind before the snap where he wanted to go with the football and he threw it into double coverage this is gold to punt again. Arenas standing back on the 10 yard line. Into the end zone. It'll come out on the 20 yard line as we go to Chris Fowler. Brett, this year's AT&T All-America Player of the Year is Colt McCoy from Texas. On behalf of AT&T, we'd like to congratulate Colt and thank all the college football fans out there who voted. The AT&T All-America Player of the Year is determined by the fans. Brett, back to you. Chris, thank you very much. And uh, clearly those Texas Longhorn fans, they got the right number. <laughs> <laughs> they, yeah, no doubt about that. No question. Now, they've been running the football to the point where they're just settling for three runs and then a punt. Eh, I think they're going to change it up here a little bit on this series. And that is the fifth sack of the night of McElroy. Kendall rolls in. I think maybe me and Will Muschamp were thinking the same thing. He comes off play action, and there's Sergio Kendall again. <laughs> this defense is playing well, and Kendall is having a great game. That time he read it perfectly, and with his acceleration and closing speed, McElroy had he just didn't have a chance at all. For Sergio, that's two and a half sacks. And now you must always account for him. He moves around in that defensive front. Locating him, that's your quarterback's job. Now they go back to Richardson, the freshman. Gideon, uh, interception back in the first quarter, makes the stop. Trent Richardson tonight about 65 yards, averaging about six and a half yards per carry. Such a great compliment to Mark Ingram this entire year. Roy Upchurch, the senior, also gets a chance from time to time, but really as the season wore on, it was the freshman out of Pensacola, Florida, who really did a great job of complimenting Ingram, and again, he's doing it tonight, had the big touchdown run. Listening up on the sideline. Third down for McElroy. Sergio was coming again, and this is Mays' first reception of the night, and he slips at the 19-yard line. Well, he almost was able to hit a crease there and go a long way for Alabama, but much like what Texas has been doing on third down and long, just keeping it simple, trying to get it out to Mays, and you see, again, he could try to hit a, a crease much like Marquise Goodwin did. At some point, at some point, you got to try to block a punt when you're struggling the way Texas is. A return a punt. No matter how good Shipley is, this punter has been hanging it high. Yeah. Coverage has been all over Shipley. This is a big-time leg. There is another fair catch of a P.J. Fitzgerald punt. The only thing that Fitzgerald hasn't been able to do tonight is find the receiver on that fake punt. <laughs> well, five of the nation's brightest young lawyers will discover the real world requires more than a degree. 
ABC's the deep end. That's a new series. And it premieres Thursday night, January 21st at 8, 7 Central on ABC. That's the deep end. Thursday night on ABC. Well, let's see if Gilbert can continue to try to evolve right before our eyes and make some good decisions here on this drive for Texas. We'll start off with the uh, inside handoff. Trey Newton. Newton has rushed 13 times for 39 yards. Monroe coming around the edge three times for 33. Remember, he lost on the third one. Nothing doing. Just stoned right there in the middle. Big number 99, Josh Chapman. He and Terrence Cody. And this defensive line and really the entire defense start to get into some predictable play calling and they are uh, we've talked about it since he's been in there they're really coming after him now you have a freshman quarterback on third down looking into this defense <laughs> now i think everybody out there watching now you know why tim tebow in florida had so much trouble think about this defense that you're watching here tonight yes a little bit easier with a freshman quarterback there's no question about that but consider let's not take anything away from this bama group this is a sensational defense. There's good one. He's beat. That's who they must use the rest of the way because of his breakout speed. Well, Marquis Goodwin and, and, and Shipley can get it going. And also DJ Monroe because they can do it so quickly. Listen, again, you know what's coming on third down if you're Alabama. It's just a matter of being able to stop it. And that time, Kareem Jackson comes in late and tries to dislodge the football that time from Goodwin, but they're able to pick up the first down. Ryan moves over to the left, and it's deflected. Incomplete Anders again. The senior from San Antonio, Texas, playing big against the Longhorns. And Gilbert, as any young quarterback does, he's going to really stare down his wide receiver and by doing that, this Alabama defense knows, number one, where the coverage needs to be. And then number two, it allows Anders to time it up and knock the ball away. And those Bama defenders, that's a third tip pass when they read those eyes. Mm. Second down and ten. Gilbert going deep down the middle. Got a man, got Chipley. Touchdown, Texas! 44 yards. Gilbert to Shipley, who shook Arenas. Shipley the holder, Lawrence out. Knocks it in. Well, finally you see Shipley make a play. The Alabama comes with the blitz and Shipley's lined up right here and he's one on one with the Renus. Great move here to the outside. He gives him just a little bit of a look. It's enough to give him an edge. And the most important thing there is the pass protection. He had time to evaluate. And when you have a double move like that, how about this Texas offensive line? They do a good job of picking up the blitz from McLean and Barron. Just enough time to be able to get the ball downfield. It's the timing up in the left. You see the eyes of the young quarterback making the read. Good job up front. And when Shipley finally is able to separate and get away from Arenas, how about the true freshman putting the ball in the money for the touchdown? And Colt McCoy on the sideline. Over there with the freshman who threw the touchdown pass. Herbie, I'm going to make a point now. How big is that play at the end of the first half right now when you look at this score that was intercepted on the shovel pass and take it in for an Alabama touchdown. That play will haunt. Now they get the onside kick, and they dive for it. Texas! No 
Quit the horns. No, this, let's give a lot of credit to the Texas defense. I said it in the first series to start this second half, that they did everything that they needed to do as the young quarterback in the offense was struggling. They kept Alabama's offense pinned back inside their own 20-yard line until eventually the Gilbert makes a play to Shipley to get a little bit of momentum going. And then on special teams, they catch a break. And again, great field position for Gilbert. And now he's got a little bit of confidence. And more importantly, the players around him have confidence too. What a great kick. Ricochet off the Alabama player. Brad Smelly. And then recovered by the horns. Now they line up quickly. Gilbert's got a field, got a man open on the far side. Shipley's up in the air and he's covered in complete. Jackson is the defender who's there. Not on my watch, Jackson says. Yeah, Jackson's out there one on one. The ball needs to be thrown just a little bit. See how Shipley has to slow down? And more often than not, an official will call that pass interference because Jackson has his back turned to the play and he's not making an effort to find the football. He got away with one there. Second and ten. That screen to Shipley. And nothing doing on that play. And Alabama jumped all over number eight. And uh, Mark Barron, their safety, led the way. Barron, a lot like Rolando McClain, you might get it once or twice, but if you try to go back again to, the, to a play that's been successful, they're starting to pick up on that. That time, Barron read that very quickly and was able to accelerate and make the play. Bama shows blitz on third down. Got one on one far side incomplete. They want the penalty flag. They're just not getting any help on that far side. Williams defended by Jackson. Take a look, Kirby. Uh, uh, take a close look because Malcolm Williams has had a rough night holding on to the football. And Jackson has pretty good coverage. He's, he's, he's pretty fit. Ball's in the foot. Ball is in the air. And there's contact. They brought the safety blitz. Robbie uh, Green. Are you kidding me? There's contact. The ball's in the air right in front of the Texas bench. Jackson gets away with a couple there within a three-play sequence. And Alabama will get it back. Goal the punter. It's going to be down at the six-yard line. Well, a reminder now for Coast to Coast, you get the latest news from the teams you care about. The power of ESPN covering Boston, Chicago, Dallas, and now Los Angeles. And now with local flavor, a Sports Center segment just for you on ESPNLosAngeles.com. Remember this Texas defense in the second half, they've been able to take advantage of Jim McElwain calling a conservative game plan. Now they're backed up inside their 10-yard line. Texas has momentum. Will they get more aggressive? Will they continue to be predictable, allowing this Texas defense to force a three and out to get the football in great field position? Richardson stays in. And they bounce the freshman straight ahead. Think about Alabama. Even though they're running the football and Texas knows it's coming, they ran the football in the first half almost at will on certain drives when Texas knew it was coming. So give credit to Will Muschamp and this Texas defense for coming out, being down 24 to 6, and not giving up and still playing with a lot of heart. Alabama had three possessions in the third quarter, all of them three and out. And now. We will come to the money quarter with Bama leading 24-13. And this presentation of the City BC. We welcome you back to the City BCS National Championship game. The Rose Bowl, Pasadena, California. Big series here for Alabama. They've gained only three yards in the second half. Just three against this Longhorn D. 
Richardson continues to play and he picks up a first down. Now let's check in with Tom Rinaldi about Mark Ingram. What's the story? Well, Brett, the training staff has worked on him 15 straight minutes. He never let go of his helmet trying to get in. They've used ice. They've tried to hydrate him using Gatorade, pickle juice, etc. But haven't been able to knead out those calf muscles to the point where he could have turned to the game. He's clearly anxious to do so, though, Brent. That's having uh, the freshman backup, Richardson, just hammered for a big first down. He is directly behind Greg McElroy. Coming again. Robinson, but he needed help from his friends. That young man is as powerful as England. Oh, like. yeah, absolutely. You put him in a weight room and you'd be sitting there in awe. He's just a guy that has tremendous power, low center of gravity, tough to bring down. We talked a lot about him tonight, how he's a great compliment to what Mark Ingram can do. And Alabama working a little bit of clock, continuing well. They've got to be careful, though, again, of being too predictable. But at the same time, in deep in their own territory, they don't want to take too many chances. Second and seven, McElroy's going to throw out, incomplete, and it'll be third down. Upchurch had slipped out of the backfield. Anytime Roy Upchurch gets into the football game and lines up at fullback, you should know as a defense that number five, is chances are he's going to go out to the flat or he's going to be out in the open somewhere trying to catch the football. Great hands. In fact, he had the big touchdown catch late in the game against Auburn to secure that victory in the Iron Bowl. So great talent. They like to use him. You know he's listed as a tailback up at fullback to try to surprise defenses. Alabama is 0 for 8 on third down. Here comes number 9. McElroy, there's a penalty flag. Throws over the middle. Picks up the first down. Richardson, but there is a penalty flag thrown by the side judge. I think it's offside's defense. They decline this penalty. Offside, defense number two. Plays the decline. His only play is a first down. It's, it's not just picking up first downs, but when you're down by 11, every first down that you allow allows Alabama to continue to eat clock, continue to keep the football away from Texas. And just when they had a little bit of momentum and Alabama hadn't had any first downs in the second half, Bama feels that heat, and they come back with a couple of big first downs in their own territory. Play fake on first down. McElroy going to go deep for Mays. Mays, penalty flag. The field judge called the flag. One of those underthrown balls, I believe, in which uh, the defense gets victimized. Pass interference. I'm rating the defense. 15 yard penalty. An automatic first down. I love this. Another. Great call here on first and 10 when it looks like you're starting to just run the football and work on the clock. You try to lull the defense to sleep, and there's a little bit of pushing going back and forth on both sides. And I, you know, I think on first and 10, like Brent, for, for Greg McElroy, that's probably his most comfortable down to throw the football. He got the matchup that he wanted. He just overthrew it, but he caught the, uh, the, first, the first down with the pass interference. McElroy ready again. Here's Richardson. And another penalty flag flies after the tackle by Houston. Texas over there celebrating for a holding call, but we'll have to wait and see. Maybe it's... Crews have a little bit of trouble. Yeah, I, right it, personal foul. Obviously, number two of the defense. That's Hands Sergio. to the face. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. I think he struggled here to try to get off of the block of James Carpenter. 
gets his hand up in the face right there. I think it's that one late where he grabbed the hold of the face mask. I think Texas felt they had a holding call on Sergio, but instead it goes the other way. Not happy. First down across the 40 yard line. Richardson almost came out of that pile, didn't he? Big Lamar Houston wouldn't let him. Second down. Texas must stop them here early in the fourth quarter. You know, if you were looking at a statistical difference between Mac Brown's team and Nick Saban's, you would have looked at the penalty charts. And here tonight, that is showing up again. Coming into this game, 180 fewer penalty yards against Alabama over the course of the season. Tonight, it's 67-23. Alabama with the fewer penalty yards. So that difference shows again as Richardson loses his helmet. Texas defense here on second down locked in on Richardson Gideon this time in earnest to back up to McElroy who's been in there most of the second half able to get pretty physical get him back into an Alabama back into this third down so here it is third down and five Brent as you mentioned Bama's converted only one third down tonight Going to try to throw for it. Incomplete. Mays was coming back and appeared to uh, slip. Let's say it was Julio Jones on that far side who slipped. He's trying to give a little bit of a look to, to Williams like he's going to go downfield. They both slipped. They both slipped. And, and you know, I've heard a lot about, you can help me here, the ryegrass. He said it's slick. It's overseas. to the try evening. to. Yeah, yeah. And it a little bit of that fog in the air. Long the Pacific kind of coast here. <laughs> Here's Tiffin with a 52 yard attempt. Missed it. Texas stays alive. Hanging around. Barely. But they're hanging. But they're breathing. <laughs> Vince Young and Colt McCoy side by side. They were side by side four years ago here when Vince staged that dramatic fourth quarter victory over USC. Now they are on the sideline and they're going to go empty. Texas has Goodwin split out to the right. Gilbert will come underneath. Shipley makes a very fine catch on a first down and uh, Herbie uh, he's getting a little more comfortable throwing the ball here. I think he's settling down and Greg Davis has done a good job of adjusting to what he's more comfortable with how they're going to attack the Alabama defense and you and I at the break both agree Marquise Goodwin Jordan Shipley these guys have the ability to hit a crease in man to man coverage and they can take it to the house and put you right back in a position to have a chance to compete in this game. Goodwin is at the top of your screen not looking in that direction throwing coming out of the backfield for what a terrific catch there by Trey Newton. Well, Trey Newton has a bright future, bright future for this Texas offense as a running back. People are very critical of their inability to run the ball, but I don't think that's a reflection necessarily of Newton. I think he's going to be a great player. There's a penalty flag. There's no penalty on the play prior to the snap. The previous play is under review. Right, look. Well, it gives us a chance to appreciate the effort by Newton. We're going to go back and, and look at this. It happened pretty quickly. Goes down and gets his fingertips on the football. And I think they want to just see as he landed on his hip, did the ball touch the surface or was he able to protect the football?
So this will be probably the best look at it. or not. He, the ball is secure. Based on the looks that we just saw, it's the play should stand and should set, set up a third and, and short. You know, Harvey, we uh, well, we have a moment. We need to congratulate the uh, Rose Bowl folks oh. on the two games that they've had here. As you look down tonight, 94,906. Our great crowd. Of course, we were jammed for Ohio State's victory over Oregon. So it'll be third and short. Now you gotta believe the quarterback sneak is coming and big Terrence Cody will be in the middle of this. This is not Terrence Cody's kind of game defending a spread offense, but anytime they go quarterback, quarterback sneak or short yardage, the big fella can get involved in a game plan. <laughs> Avoid the mountain, try to find a pass. Third down and one. That's not high percentage when you go in there. There's a penalty flag this time. We got Alabama this time. Offside. Trying to, yeah, trying to jump the gun a little bit. Wonder why all the white jerseys went backwards. Offside. Nose guard. Defense. Five yard penalty. Results in a first down. Can't miss him. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it's actually, uh, you know, it almost had, looks like McLean yeah, was stuck over the uh, McLean had cheated up into that right in between the guard and the center just trying to shoot a gap and it worked but he just jumped a little bit early all right let's see if Gilbert can get this offense going again looking for Goodwin and Shipley has time and couldn't find a receiver quickly enough they brought down Washington again and it will be second down Boy, it can close so quickly when that door starts to slam. He's looking off to his left to Shipley, but Shipley's unfortunately trying to go up against Kareem Jackson, and he can't shake it. He's, Kareem Jackson is all over him, and eventually there's nothing that the young quarterback, uh, Garrett Gilbert, could do with the football. Complete to the 46 yard line, and that time he did find Shipley, who was double covered, threw it well. well. That is a lot of traffic in there to the middle of that Bama defense. They've had a lot of success on third down with the tunnel screen. The last time they tried to run it, Mark Barron did an excellent job of reading the play and jumping it and taking it away. But they have hit a couple of big ones to Marquise Goodwin. Maybe a good time to fake it to Goodwin and maybe try to go to the tunnel screen on the other side. It may have been a false start in the middle. False start. Number 63 offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. Michael Huey. They're either going to roll the quarterback out away from the pressure, kind of moving moving the launching point for Mac Brown, or just get the ball out of his hands quickly with some type of screen. You don't want him sitting back there in that pocket with this Alabama defense on a third down. He's got to hurry. Got it off. And fires a beautiful ball to Shipley for a first down. Barron was the defender, and it was a fine throw to Shipley for 13 yards. All of a sudden, Garrett Gilbert's looking like a seasoned veteran. Walks up, sees the coverage that he wants, makes a little adjustment, gets the matchup to Shipley, and calmly steps up, maneuvers well in the pocket, and makes a nice throw to Shipley for the first down. Under pressure, quickly reads it incomplete. Got it off though when that's he saw okay. the heat coming. Yeah, well, that's okay. I mean, when you're when you're not only trying to execute, you're also trying to work with the clock. Here comes McLean closing in on him. 
I mean, imagine he showed up at this stadium today, looking around at the San Gabriel Mountains and cheering on old Colt, thinking about, boy, Colt, you're going to go out in style, win a national championship. All of a sudden, second series. Hey, rookie, you're in the ball game. Let's go. <laughs> and now he's out there looking into the eyes of Orlando McClain. <laughs> Here's Gilbert with time, steps up into his throw. They've got another first down with Shipley. Well, Shipley's starting to feel pretty comfortable here going up against this defense and getting some matchups in his secondary where they can take advantage of his quickness. This time it was against Mark Farron. Earlier it was against Justin Woodall. I believe Shipley has a fabulous future as a slot receiver in the National Football League. He's a Wes Welker type of guy no in the NFL. Question. First and ten. Quick strike to the outside, and Buckner's upended. Alabama is doing everything that they can to disrupt the rhythm that this young quarterback, Gilbert, has all of a sudden found. This time, they decided to bring Arenas on a blitz, so it's a, a different looks. They're sitting, rushing three and dropping eight, and other times bringing pressure, but the young man continues to read the defense properly and making good decisions with the football. But he's got to finish this drive. Second down and 13, Whitaker becomes one of his receivers. He is split out to the left as they spread the field. Gilbert got a man open. Touchdown, Texas. Shipley's second of the night. A freshman growing up before your eyes. 28 more yards. with his best receiver against Robbie Green, the sophomore. There was some confusion in the secondary from Alabama. You can see Green in the background turning around. He thought he had safety help. And how about the freshman recognizing the one-on-one -on -one coverage, puts it up in the air where Shipley can make the catch. His 10th catch of the night for 122 yards and two touchdowns. Going for two. Middle. Got it. Complete. Buckner. A comeback for the ages, perhaps. But now it is up to the champions of the SEC. And they will gather around an unbeaten quarterback following this two-point conversion. Greg McElroy has not lost a football game as a starting quarterback since the eighth grade. He's under the gun next. ESPN's coverage of the City BCS National Championship game on ABC. Brought to you by City. Proud to present college football's biggest game. Warner Brothers Pictures, Edge of Darkness, starring Mel Gibson, in theaters everywhere January 29th. Dr. Pepper, Drink It Slow, Doctor's Orders, and The Home Depot, more saving, more doing. That's the power of The Home Depot. Well, just when you thought the coach's trophy presented by Dr. Pepper was on its way to Tuscaloosa, the Texas Longhorns have fired back. Jordan Shipley had only one catch in the first half for five yards. In the second half, he's had nine catches for 117 yards and two touchdowns. The short kickoff again. Fair catch at the 34. Right, we talked about Bama's going to take some chances and bring blitzes. It's going to leave Shipley right here one-on-one -on -one with a safety in Robbie Green. There's some confusion. Green ends up coming up. I think he expected Woodall to be over the top to help him out. And how about the hit that Garrett Gilbert takes right here by Courtney Upshaw, showing his toughness. And who's his number one fan right there? Quarterback Colt McCoy cheering him on. Greg Davis. Calling plays, and now the Heisman Trophy winner, Mark Ingram, returns for Alabama. Number 22 is back in the backfield. 
Alabama scoreless here in the second half. Texas has put 15 points in this comeback bid since the intermission. Scoring their first touchdowns of the game in the second half. Play action, McElroy, first down, drops it in underneath to Ingram. Ingram out to the 41-yard line. McElroy back on the field as a linebacker, Herbie. And Jim McElwain now is going to try to mix up and try to maintain the balance that they had tried to have earlier in the first half. They've been very, very conservative with the big lead, probably anticipating that their defense could hold on even with the conservative game plan on offense. But all of a sudden, the freshman, Derek Gilbert, has caught fire. Now Alabama's got to get back to being more aggressive with their play calling. Ingram bounces outside. You can't bring him around down on the ground alone. You need help. The junior college transfer, James Carpenter, who has had a great night tonight, sealing the edge, comes up with another great block. You also have the big tight end, Colin Peak. And again, when you allow Mark Ingram to build up some momentum and get to that second level of the defense, very, very difficult to slow him down. He's pounded for 111 yards here tonight and one touchdown. And just like against Auburn and Florida, the tide begins to mount a big time drive. But can they finish it? Ingram again. Got about a yard. Sam Macho. Should mention it. McElroy back on the field playing. Dustin Ernest had played for him most of his second half, and McElroy, uh, an important leader to have out of this field. Ingram's mom watching there in the middle, the black and white coat, Flint, Michigan. Second and nine. Ingram again, cut off trying to run to the left that time. And McElroy again. McElroy, now that he's back out there all over the field, and this is a huge second down, Brent, because what Texas wanted to try to do here is get to Ingram and get Greg McElroy into a third and long, where they've got an advantage with Alabama only converting one of 10 third down attempts. Third and eight. Too much time. Incomplete. Aaron Williams, the defender. Will Muschamp always says, I want to affect the quarterback. Look at Greg McElroy losing ground. You see how he doesn't trust what he is seeing? It's because of what Muschamp is doing, creating confusion. He has nowhere to go with the football. But when you see a quarterback losing ground, it's what Will Muschamp means when he says, I want to affect the quarterback. Fitzgerald versus Shipley again. And a half, Texas. So the Longhorns. Use a timeout here. We'll take a break. 3.21 left. And you're watching the City BCS National Championship on ABC. We welcome you back to the City BCS National Championship with Kirk Herb Street. I'm Brett Musburger. Texas rallying in the second half, trails it by three. 45 points on our board tonight. And Shipley, who has scored their two touchdowns, goes back deep. A high, beautiful punt. Shipley will have to go for the fair catch at the seven yard line. Here's young Garrett Gilbert. Yeah, Garrett Gilbert came into this game, as you would expect, he's forced in because of the injury. The game was moving fast, they were pressuring him. 
not seeing open receivers. All of a sudden, he started to settle down. The defense gave him a reason to believe with good field position. Offensive line giving him time to throw. And I think this throw is Shipley really ignited his confidence and started to make him believe that he had the goods and he had what it takes to be able to lead this offense. But now he finds himself deep in his own territory to try to make some adjustments. What a change of events. Four of 22. And look at his last 14 throws hitting 10 passes. Travis High and Austin, Texas led them to two state championships. From his own end zone. Middle incomplete, and there's a penalty flag. Mark Barron working in the secondary. Mark Barron holding on to Kirkendall. Looks like defensive holding to me. Holding. Number four defense against an eligible receiver. Ten yard penalty and an automatic first down. We should note that with a young quarterback back there, how about this Texas offensive line? There it is. I mean, Barron clearly holding on to Kirk and Dole. This Texas offensive line, the same line that gave up nine sacks against Sue in Nebraska, they haven't given up a sack tonight. Down toward three minutes. Gilbert fumble. Ball's loose. Bama's got it. At the three-yard line. The defense for the Crimson Tide. Great time to call the blitz. Eric Anders comes off the left, left edge of the offense. The blind side. And just when I said they haven't given up a sack, Alabama dials up the blitz and Anders makes it home his sixth sack of the year. Upshaw recovers it. Anders coming in unmolested and Gilbert never felt it. The young man by way of San Antonio Texas lights up the Longhorns in the final three minutes. He's played a brilliant football game. Mount Cody, the lead fullback. Here's Ingram. To the two, and it will be second down and goal. Important for Texas not to lose their swagger here. I know it's a big turn of events, but Alabama in these situations They've not always been able to capitalize and score touchdowns in the red zone. It's something that has haunted Greg McElroy and the Crimson Tide offense. You know they're going to come in there with the big uh, running back, Mark Ingram. But Texas, if they're able to hold them to a field goal, obviously they're still right in this football game. Cody, the lead fullback. He'll set down in front of Ingram. Ingram stopped. It'll be third down and goal from the one yard line. Looks like Texas is going to try to use one of their timeouts. And you go back to that substitution mistake that they had when they didn't have enough men on the field. They had a timeout. We'll take a break and come back for the final 206. Well, the DirecTV drive to the national championship bus has completed its season-long journey. And now the Crimson Tide of Alabama trying to complete their season-long journey. Undefeated. And within one yard of putting Texas away with a third and goal and two minutes remaining. Cody leads Ingram. Ingram battles second effort. Touchdown. His second of the night. Shonda, his mother. And we hope that Mark Sr. was able to watch. He, of course, has been incarcerated up in New York. He's awaiting final sentencing. He stays in constant touch with Mark. Passes along coaching tips to him through mom. 
It's, it's, it's our turn, baby. It's our turn. And when we talk about all the Heisman Trophy winners who have struggled in the BCS championship game, you will not include Mark Ingram in that list. He came up huge here tonight. Shook off a hamstring cramp, whatever it was, down on the sideline. Yeah. And, and the, the touchdown, very fitting way for Alabama to put the seal on this because you said it, second effort from Mark Ingram. And how many times in 2009 have we seen that very thing by Ingram? Initially feels a little bit of a presence from Texas, but fights through the corner Aaron Williams and eventually lunges in for the, the, the you would think again, the touchdown that puts this out of reach for Texas. And in a night where they got conservative, didn't ask a lot from Greg McElroy, ended up 6 of 11 for 58 yards. They turned to the running game in the tandem tonight of Ingram and Richardson. Senior Lee Tiffin. They await the review upstairs. Didn't seem to be much doubt. Did you think, Herbie? No, I, I, I think probably just, just to be uh, safe. After further video review, the ball breaks the goal line plane. Prior to either knee hitting the ground, it is a touchdown. So here's Tiffin. Fitzgerald will put it down. Tacks on another point. Two minutes away from a national championship. Uh, they, they dialed up the blitz at the right time. Three, created some confusion on the left side of the Texas offensive line. Upshaw comes up with it inside the five-yard line. And three plays later, the big guy, the Heisman Trophy winner from 2009, Mark Ingram, into the end zone and puts the tide up by 10. And over on the side, I'm enjoying that. So Texas turned it over three times, and Alabama scored 14 points, one an intercepted pass for a touchdown. And there are so many outstanding players on this Bama defense, you hardly know where to begin. Marcel Darius, he intercepted the ball, ran for a touchdown, knocked Colt McCoy out of the game. Lorenzo Washington came up big. Eric Anders moments ago. Orlando McClain has played big all night long. Corey Reamer on that blitz, one after another, and many of them are coming back next year. And with this win, Herbie, I predicted Alabama in some polls will go off as the preseason number one. I don't know how they can't be. With the players that they have coming back, Dante Hightower will be back from his injury. They'll probably lose McLean to the NFL, but I'm with you. I don't know how you can't have them up at number one with everything they have coming back. Well, a reminder now that ESPN will kick off Super Bowl week in South Florida on Sunday, January 31st. McDonald's presents the 2010 Pro Bowl. How's that for a doubleheader? Go down to Miami, watch the Pro Bowl, stick around for a week, and catch the Super Bowl. You a fan of the way they've moved the uh, the Pro Bowl? I like it when it's in Hawaii myself. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, you know, for a little change of pace. Yeah. And for the business it's going to bring to South Florida. What do you, what do, you do with all the players in the Super Bowl that can't play in the Pro Bowl? They don't like to play that game anyway between you and me. Stepping away, Gilbert. So, Colt McCoy. And when you think about this year, ladies and gentlemen, remember how the season began? It was Sam Bradford. He was the reigning Heisman Trophy winner. There was Tim Tebow. He'd won a Heisman at Florida. There was Colt McCoy. There were the three, the three great quarterbacks. Now, now think about what happened. Sam Bradford injured against BYU, knocked out by Texas down there as we watch this play unfold with Gilbert. And it's intercepted at the 30-yard line. They get down. The clock will continue to run. That championship trophy is headed back to Tusk. 
Tuscaloosa. Well, let me go back about those quarterbacks. And then Tim Tebow suffered that serious injury. I think it was in a concussion. Maybe it was Kentucky where he hit his head. And then here tonight, Colt McCoy in the national championship game. Just an unbelievable turn of yeah. events with three marquee quarterbacks. Yeah, no question about it. And obviously in the championship game, you hate to see Colt go down. Really been impressed with Gilbert here. He just locks in and didn't even see Javier Arenas throws it right into his chest. And again, that's just part of being a young quarterback. And as soon as he threw it, he knew that he had made the mistake. But Arenas uh, has had a brilliant career in his years in Tuscaloosa. And it's fitting for him as much as it is for Ingram for him to come up with a big turnover and get the interception. It's been a long time between championships as Richardson comes in. There's a penalty flag thrown downfield. And you think about Nick Saban. You First think about foul. Nick Saban. Base rush. Number 30 into the defense. Penalty to half the distance to the goal line from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Only his third year, the controversy that was stirred up, speaking of South Florida, when he left the Dolphins. And now Nick Saban, he'll win his second national championship. Remember, he led LSU to a title in New Orleans over Oklahoma. And now here tonight on the strength of a very well-coached, well-recruited defense, the Crimson Tide will be rolling back to Tuscaloosa with their first national championship since 92. And uh, when you think of these two as... Richardson battles toward the end zone. You think about these two coaches, Herbie, they're not going to have to dial up a loan anytime soon. <laughs> these are two of the highest salary in the country. There's Mac Brown, 2009 salary. And look at what Nick Saban came up with tonight, a little $400,000 worth of extra sugar. Now that's too, going good. That's not too bad, is it? <laughs> He's a big individual winner tonight. <laughs> and there's Mac Brown. Tough night. The team certainly did not quit. They deserve very high marks yeah. for hanging in here in the second half. McElroy comes back to Los Angeles. Richardson barges into the end zone. His second of the night. I mean, they got him with emphasis. That was actually, that, that might have been. all those rules, that was with emphasis. There, was there contact there? I mean, that wasn't just Gatorade. No, that was the plastic. We're, we're coming after I mean, this, this is guy. getting a little physical here, boys. <laughs> We've had enough of his rules. We, we, Bang! We on that left ear field. We Woo! rule right now. That's taking Gatorade shower to a different <laughs> level there. He that's turned what, right into that baby. That's one of the all-time best. Oh, That's man. for faking the punter. <laughs> right. Oh, he wouldn't I, be happy until the game's over. Look no. He's going to eventually smile. He can get, he'll, get it going. he'll get it going. <laughs> when, that, when, it's, when it's all said and done. Oh, Tevin hit the upright. No good. That's no way to end a record-breaking career. Slam one off the upright. I just want to echo what you said about Nick Saban. It is just his third year, what he was able to do this year. Last year, undefeated in the regular season. Got close to the championship game, lost to Florida. Ended up losing their bowl game. I really think they used those last two games as motivation to get them ready for this year. And in just his third year, this program with Nick Saban at the helm will get stronger and stronger and stronger. And then on the other side, we have to say about Mac Brown, you lose Colt McCoy in the second series of the game, and you fight back to get it to 24-21. A lot of those players in the burnt orange uniforms when they go into that locker room, have, they're frustrated, discouraged, but they didn't give up, and that's what you really got to appreciate about that. Well, a reminder now to uh, stay tuned for your late local news, Nightline and Jimmy Kimmel Live over most of these ABC stations. And, of course, over on ESPN, we want to turn to SportsCenter for all the post-game analysis. I'm sure they'll be hearing from Colt McCoy, hearing from Coach Saban. And how about Greg McElroy? Did not have, by any means, a spectacular game here tonight. Threw the ball only 11 times. 
But the last time he lost a football game as a starting quarterback was in the eighth grade. Unbeaten at South Lake outside of Dallas. Unbeaten now with the Crimson Tide. And he has just quarterbacked a national championship game. He's a Rhodes Scholar. And he'll be back next year. And Mark Ingram, he snapped that jinx. A Heisman Trophy winner but he's who feeling came it up huge here tonight. There is the list of those who have won the Heisman and the national championship. And it's a short list. A lot more have failed lately. Since 1950. That's, that's something incredible. For that screen, there's Goodwin picking his way and out of bounds as the final 30 minutes come up. And uh, we talked about it. I'm sorry. We said we talked about Alabama next year being a team. How about with Gilbert the way he grew up the Texas Longhorns. They're probably not going to miss a beat. All of a sudden the experience he gained tonight will be invaluable in 2010 as they, he gets ready to take over for Colt McCoy permanently. Absolutely. Gilbert. Uh. Deflected. And intercepted. Picked off on the deflection by Alabama's Tyrone King, a senior who's out just bringing the clock down from Birmingham, Alabama. So now he's got to go back and get that championship <laughs> cap off. Yeah, yeah. He had the national championship hat on, and he's pretty fired up. Playing high school football at South Lake Carroll, one of the perennial powers, not just in the state of Texas, but really respected nationally. You can imagine this is a little bit extra sweet for Greg McElroy. Now Nick will allow himself to say, Nice job. <laughs> Still not smiling. <laughs> That'll do it. Crimson Tide wins the national championship. The Bear would be proud. Let's go to Tom Rinaldi with Coach Saban. Coach, you knew it wasn't going to be easy when Texas closed to within three late in the fourth quarter. What was your message to your defense? Well, our message at halftime was we got to play for 60 minutes. You know, championship teams and teams that get to this point are going to be able to come back, and they did, and that speaks well for the character of their team and their coaching staff. And, you know, they did a great job of coming back. I was proud of those bounce back, though, in the fourth quarter. The first coach to win two BCS national championships with two different schools allow yourself this what does it mean to you well really what it means to me is I'm so happy for our entire team you know our fans who have been great ever since we've been in Alabama the players uh, the great job that they've done in buying in to do what we need to do our coaching staff and everybody in the organization our administration Mal Moore Dr. Witt everybody has you know made a great team and that's why this team is good it's not just because of me uh, I'm proud of the team and I'm proud of the way they played today and I'm really proud of the state of Alabama and our folks that uh, this means a lot to. You think the tide would be back this fast? Well, I, I never had a timetable for it. We just try to do what we need to do every day from a process standpoint to get better. And I'm really proud of the way our guys competed today. The process and now the result. Congratulations, Nick. Lisa Salters now. Thank you, Tom. I'm with uh, Texas quarterback Colt McCoy. Colt, what was it like for you to watch this game, your, your last game in a Longhorn uniform from the sideline? I, I, I love this game. I have a passion for this game. I've done everything I can to contribute to my team. Now we made it this far, and, and it's unfortunate I didn't get to play. I, you know, I, I would have given, I, I'd have given everything I had to be out there with my team. But congratulations to Alabama. I love the way our team fought. Uh, Garrett Gilbert stepped in and played 
as good as he could play. You know, he, he did a tremendous job, and uh, I always give God the glory. I never question why things happen the way they do. Uh, God is in control of my life, uh, and I know that nothing else, I, I'm standing on the rock. What have doctors told you about the extent of your injury to your shoulder? You know, I, I, I really have no pain in my arm. I just can't feel my arm. Uh, uh, it wasn't a painful hit. I've taken that hit over and over my, my whole life. Uh, playing this game, I know you're going to get hit. Uh, I guess I got hit the right way. I, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm not in pain. My arm's dead. You know, it's like, it feels like I, I slept in my arm, woke up, and it, it's dead. So, uh, I don't know. Well, it's been a pleasure watching you these last four years. Best of luck to you in the future, Colt. Thank you. Thank you. Congrats to Alabama. A tremendous football team. Thank you. Let's head over to Tom Rinaldi. Tom. Thanks very much, Lisa, here with Mark Ingram. Mark, I know it was a very, very difficult game for you. I know you're in some pain right now. Heisman Trophy National Championship. How do you describe the journey of this season? Uh, just the whole entire organization from the top to the bottom. That's all we work for. We set that goal in the beginning of the year, and we work for it, and we deserve it. I don't think anybody in the country worked harder than us and uh, just played a great game today, and I got to give credit to, Eric, to the entire team because it was a team effort, and I could have done it by myself. I know your dad was watching you tonight. What message did you send him with how you played? Man, I love you, man. We did it. We did it. You're number one, baby. I love you. There's a proud son to a proud father. Congratulations, Mark. Brent? Tom and Lisa, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I think that a whole lot of folks for me have, have seen just the kind of impressive young men that we deal with uh, around the landscape of of college football the Alabama team coming away with another national championship and uh, what are your thoughts that you're taking away from this no, number one Alabama played nearly perfect game when they played Florida because that was a real goal for them I really wonder I think a lot of people wondered could they recreate that same magic and, and intensity and they were able to do it they're also able to take advantage of the opportunity when McCoy went down give Texas all the credit in the world for not going away and quitting and fighting back to get it within a three-point game. But at the end of the day, the, the champion in college football this year, very, very deserving that it's the Alabama Crimson Tide. Exactly. Well, they still have the presentation of the Coaches Trophy presented by Dr. Pepper when we continue here tonight on ABC.